So that's when I started up the telemarketing office. And again, and the funny thing about it, when I was running the telemarketing office legitimately, I was making about like, you know, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars a week. You feel me? So so when I started doing it illegally, now we're making like, you know what I'm saying, fifty, a hundred thousand dollars a week. You feel me? And that's when it kind of like, like, okay, wow. But of course, that was short lived, got jammed up. But just like anything, when you taste of it, and then I got it, it's like, okay, hell no, nah, let me go ahead and <laughs> run it up again, you know. But um, again, I've never really gone into the intricate details and the crazy part about it, although the statute of limitations are done on the case. But, you know, had I really been convicted for all of the crimes, financial crimes I've done, and everything, man, I would have been buried under the jail because, you know, they never catch you for everything that you do. It was, man, it's scary for people that's watching this. Y'all know, man, this is my first bid. You get out the bus, they strip you naked. They, You know, the, the, the CEO there, he's waiting to slap the first person to get out of line. You feel me? And you just intimidated. By the time you go through the whole intake and everything, you know, I had a little hair then. You feel me? So they shave your hair off and everything. So you go inside the dorm, then you like... Damn, it's here, right? And I think I see my first fight like the second day or something like that. Then it's like, okay, man. Then I see my first stabbing like the following week. You know, throughout the nine-year bid, I end up seeing somebody get killed. Somebody got raped. I've seen, you know, gang initiations. I've seen all that dumb stuff. You know what I'm saying? I've seen COs get it. All right, good afternoon. This is State of Florida versus Stephen. With multiple cases before the court. Hey, dog, so what's your name? Uh, where you from? And go ahead and uh, just tell me your background, dog. Tell me um, your upbringing, mm -hmm. what led you to prison, and just, just go from there. Hey, what's going on? What's going on? Uh, thank you. Well, my name is Wesley Paul, a.k.a. the Blueprint Mastermind. Yeah, your favorite South Florida zoo, you know, born and raised here in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Um, Man, okay, to answer... Your your story your your question there. I did twelve years. You know, uh, got incarcerated November eighteenth, two thousand and ten. Two thousand and ten. Got out in two thousand. No, I didn't do twelve. I did nine. I'm sorry. Got out October eighteenth, two thousand and nineteen. Um, offenses all white collar crimes. You know, first degree organized fraud, money laundering, um, and unlawful use of stolen identity to put it all in a nutshell for the viewers out there you know i had a boiler room operation you know i was a ring leader of uh several telemarketing offices which we'll go into but you know uh now that i'm out i've gotten i've been out since again 2020 we're in 2024 so these past three and a half four years i have turned my life around to being a serial entrepreneur serial entrepreneur a podcaster a leader, a father, and, you know, here to just make a difference, you know, um, have a beautiful family, beautiful girl, and, you know, just trying to be a, a activist now as far as entrepreneurship is concerned and, you know, try to make a difference out here nowadays because, you know, final point I want to say is, you know, out of the nine years I did, right, I realized, like, damn, had I had the same mindset that I have now in there, I would have never done that time, right? So it's all about, you know, turning a negative into a positive. So it's funny how where you just, you don't put your energy into negative things. If you put it into positive things, how far you can go. So that's sort of a little introduction into myself right there. Yeah, thank you, bro. That's fire. All right, so just leaning into your childhood, bro. What did, like, childhood look like for you? Uh, and just, like, your young adolescent years, your family, were you involved in sports? And uh, maybe, like, kind of take us into if you started, like, getting into trouble and how that process happened. Wow, good question. You know, first of all, my, my ex's mother always told me this. She's always said, you know, you have a wine you 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 uh you have a wine appetite but a beer budget right so in other words i've always had an expensive taste but i just never had a way to be able to get the finer things that i wanted right so to answer your question 
Growing up, I grew up dirt poor like most people in the inner city. Again, I was born and raised here in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Um, single mother, three kids. Dad left when we was young, so she was forced to raise all three of us working two, three jobs and everything. I got my first, no, my first job was a bagger in Winn-Dixie, right? So, but before I get into my first job, all throughout school, been very bad student. I'll be honest, not just behavior wise but academically i just didn't give school much attention you know i barely graduated high school i had to go to summer school just to walk this just to get my diploma so that gives you a little bit of idea but i got my first job as a bagger as when dixie worked there for six months then my second job was a telemarketer at a sales office selling cruise vacations not too far from here i got that job as a senior in high school the beautiful what's very important about that was it was full commission you know, no hourly salary. So basically, I was going to pay for $100 for each sale that I made. I think my first week I did 10 sales. That's $1,000. So I was locked in after that. And instantly I knew I, in that moment that you earn what you make. You're right. If you came in there, you didn't, you didn't hustle, you wasn't going to make anything, right? So I had the entrepreneurial spirit since then. And that was my first job. Uh, not my first job. That was my uh, uh, second job. I had that all throughout my senior year. I've worked there for like three, four years. And after that, that mushroomed into me opening up my own telemarketing office at the age of 24, which, you know, um, I've never shared this on camera, you know, outside of a deposition with uh, a police officers. Right. But, you know, the specifics of the crime was basically I learned uh how to flip timeshares, how to sell timeshares from a friend, end up opening up my own business doing so. Me and a partner end up starting up the business. After a year, we separated. I opened up my own office at 25, and um, I had that for about a year until, you know, greed got the best of me. So um, started end up double, triple, quadruple charging clients, credit cards, and that's where I caught my first my first charge out of the series of offenses that I got incarcerated for. And then over the years until my final arrest, I was just operating boiler rooms and everything like that, running it up, you know. Um, and for those who don't believe me, again, this is all public information. And uh, got to the point where I was sentenced to, you know, 120 months, followed by, you know, 10 years probation and paying a quarter million dollars in restitution. And one thing I can say, yes, I made a lot of money throughout my criminal run, you know, but I was high in ignorance, high in misjudgment and everything like that. And, you know, now that I'm out, you know, I take my same talents as far as knowing how to get money, because, again, I no longer have that, you know, beer budget. Right. So, we, you know, our budget matches our wine taste. Right. So I just now take all of my talents and efforts and put it into positivity by putting a platform together of my podcast, Respect My Blueprint, starting up my own uh, tech company, Uptrend Credit, where it's a credit monitoring company where we allow consumers to be able to monitor as well as upgrade their credit. And um, also being a mentor, educating, you know, young inner city kids on the importance of personal finance, financial literacy, because one final point I want to say I think we talked about this a little bit. My last two years of my bid, I was in work release. Two years of work release. Most people who are aware of this, you know, before you get back into society, the Department of Corrections allow you to reacclimate by give, putting you a program called work release. I was in this program the last two years. I was working as a server, a part-time server at a restaurant. All my tips and all my checks, I was saving it against the rules of Department of Correction because you can't save your money. But I'm cuffing my money. I had a Wells Fargo bank account. I'm cuffing it. So I took it all. Last two years, I'm taking my money. I'm paying off my credit. I'm saving my money. So I got out on the streets with a 700 plus credit score and like two credit cards. I have a Capital One and a Discover credit card. And right there, that set the that set the stage for me because four months after that pandemic came, I'm locked in the house, but I had good credit. I said, you know what, since I was able to educate myself and build up my credit, let me do the same for others. And after that, it's been, you know, story's been history. That's fire, bro. So let me backtrack some. Whenever you were um, in high school working at the uh, telemarketing spot, mm -hmm. did you ever get like distracted and like detoured 
uh, by like street lifestyle at all? Were you like smoking and drinking and partying or oh, like yeah. selling any dope and all that too? Or were you just focused on the legal hustle? Well, okay. When I was, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't outside, outside like that, but I was influenced outside. Of course, you know, we influenced by hip hop. We influenced by our culture, you know, the way our fashion is and everything. Right. So, of course, I wanted the Jays. Of course, I wanted the, uh, um, back then it was Mecca and Nietzsche and everything. Like, of course, right? You know, but I wasn't on the block slinging. I wasn't toting no guns. I, I, you know, that wasn't my forte. Really, in high school, how I was getting it, again, I wasn't bad behavior. I was bad academically. So, I played JV football my, my uh, freshman year. I said, you know what? Forget sports. You know, nah, I'm not talented enough to make it to the pros. But once I, my senior year, once I got that job, and then my mom forced me to pay for my own clothes. So mind you, I want the J's. Since I want the $150 J's, I got to put 10 hours into the telemarketing job to get two sales to be able to get the J's. So necessarily that was, I guess... It's funny how they say money is the root of all evil. I guess in my situation that what it was the case because me not having everything and me having to hustle to get my own money by working, it was like, damn, in order for me to get the things I really want, the fast cars, the money, the women, the jewelry and everything, I got to find a way to make more money. All right. But again, I'm not too much of the criminal that's outside. Let me go ahead and figure out a way. So that's when I started up the telemarketing office. And again, and the funny thing about it, when I was running the telemarketing office legitimately, I was making about like, you know, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars a week. You feel me? So so when I started doing it illegally, now we're making like, you know, what I'm saying fifty, a hundred thousand dollars a week. You feel me? And that's when it kind of like, like, okay, wow. But, of course, that was short-lived, got jammed up. But just like anything, when you taste of it, and then I got it, it's like, okay, hell no. Nah, let me go ahead and <laughs> run it up again, you know. But, um, again, I've never really gone into the intricate details. And the crazy part about it, although the statute of limitations are done on the case, but, you know, had I really been convicted for all of the crimes, financial crimes I've done, and everything, man, I would have been buried under the jail because, you know, they never catch you for everything that you do, you feel me?